we're in North Beach right now, right by City Lights Books, man. And what I used to do is, uh, you couldn't really like make money on playing on the streets so much in North Beach during the day, like especially around this hour. So I would go into this place here, it's City Lights Books, and it's owned by the world famous poet. You know, it's the first poet I ever had a book by was Ferling Getty. And it turned out he owned this place. And we'd see him walking around here all the time. And they were real hospitable. And they would let me uh, come in there and I just kind of read my way through that store as like a broke ass, you know, teenage kid with, you know, uh, wearing the same clothes every day for six months or a year and coming in there with a cheap guitar. But I, they would let me just like hang out and I, you know, I'd read books, whatever appealed to me, man. So I would read, uh, I remember reading The Travels of Marco Polo in there one time. That took a long time to read and I read, uh, Philosophy, Martin Buber and Nietzsche, everybody was talking about Nietzsche. There was a movie by Mick Jagger where he was quoting Nietzsche so, and Robert Johnson. So I think I better read that. And it was just kind of a real exciting kind of scene between Chinatown and City Lights and the, and the clubs up there. You know, it was like a whole scene. There'd be a lot of tourists out here on, uh, especially on the weekend nights, but really I'd be up here all year round playing on the streets. So we'd go up in that corner over there and play. And I generally play from about I don't know, we'd probably go out there about eight or nine o'clock and be out there till two or 2.30, maybe even later, you know. We'd just play and play and play, or I'd play. A lot of different things happened up on that corner. Uh, there were brawls, there were arrests, huge mobs of people out there. One time a guy, there was a huge mob on New Year's Eve and a guy climbed up the telephone pole and tried to walk across the street like a tightrope walker, you know. We were down below playing while he's doing that. People are just throwing handfuls of money at us, you know. We're out here playing, man. It was me and my buddy uh, Danny, Crazy Horse Danny, you know. He lives down in Austin now. There's this guy comes out. I think he's with another guy. And he comes up, it was just this guy comes out, and as he gets closer, I go, holy moly, man, that's Allen Ginsberg. And he goes, hey, guys, uh, my, my name's Allen, you know. Mind if I sit in with you? And I go, yeah, you know, we introduced ourselves and uh, we knew who he was, you know. And I'd read a lot of his stuff even back before I came to San Francisco. His stuff was like letters from uh, the far out, you know, from the other world, man. Like, you know, you'd read those poems about being in Peru on laughing gas. And, you know, you're like 12 years old and they're trying to figure out what the hell it was, you know. It was so valuable, you know. And he was such a hero. And, but here he comes. And he's like, mind if I sit in with you? And we're like, yeah, sure, man. And so he starts, he goes, can you guys play some country blues? Is what he said. And then we start playing, we're playing this thing, and then he starts making up a song, you know? And he's singing to um, people going, going by, man. And, uh, you know, there's sailors going by, they're on leave, and then there's like strippers on their way into the Condor Club wearing their like fur coats. And then, you know, guys with white shoes and plaid pants with their wives here from Omaha. And, like, Different people living on the street, you know, are coming out the winos, and the people from the Swiss American Hotel, which is like, like, probably the world's most completely insane residence hotel at that time, you know, really, we won't even go into it. And like, people are all coming out and stuff, but nobody seems to really recognize him. And uh, he's just going on and on playing, you know, and uh, it was really exciting, like, like, wow, I'm playing with Ginsburg, man, you know, this is pretty wild. And he's just out on the corner, and like we're standing right in the doorway, and he's singing and like talking. We're looking up and down the street, and he's like looking at people as they go by. And... But we're back up here the next morning, I think it was, maybe doing going to do something else up there. Here, he, here they come, man. He's a VW bus Pull, pulls up right over there on that corner, and he goes, "Hey, you guys need a ride." And like, uh, this is Peter. He's driving it. This is Peter Olovsky's driving it. You know. And Ginsburg's sitting in the passenger side, so we climb in the back and we're riding around San Francisco on this bus, you know. And he immediately, uh, so what do you guys do, man, for your voice, man? Because we're out there singing all night, man. You really can, like, really, oh, yeah, well, we, you know, we tell him, like, you know, we drink whiskey and, you know, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, I think, you know. He goes, well, Dylan told me. Look, me and the other guy look at each other, like, Dylan told him. <laughs> Dylan told me, you know, uh, Lemon and honey, or something, you know, something innocuous like that, you know, like that. Don't that. So then we went all the way over to the mission with him, and he dropped us off. Well, we went to the Goodwill, I guess it was, and then he came in with us, and we all bought stuff at the Goodwill, you know. The day after the Ginsburg thing, or right after that, I hitchhiked to Port, I just went out and hitchhiked north. And I hitchhiked up to Ukiah, where I got picked up by this guy that was like the opposite of Ginsburg. Did they ever tell you about this? 
So I get I get up there. It's another it's another City Lights connection. Okay. Where he's like the opposite of Ginsburg, Anton Lavey. Okay, he picks me up hitchhiking in Ukiah, where I'm stranded for like eight or nine hours. Okay, and uh, he's in a Mercedes with a girl, and I'm out there. People are like mooning me and like throwing garbage out their car window at me, and I'm stuck up there, man. And this guy picks me up, and I'm, he says, "Where are you going?" I go, "Portland," you know, and uh, he goes, "I'll take you right there," you know, and uh, that was a really weird ride. I mean, I won't go into the whole thing, but it was weird. And so, like, it was going from, like, Ginsburg, who sort of seemed like a benevolent sort of, uh, you know, hipster, you know, to this guy that seems sort of like a malevolent hipster, like some of the things that happen on the ride were very strange. I always look at LeVay as a carny. Yeah, he's, a, he's dark, man. He's kind of a carny. Like, we got up there, we take a cigarette break, and we're standing out, and like, uh, like, looking at some fog and some, you know. And he says to the chick, he goes, uh, should we tell him who I am? And like he goes, you know who I am. He went, you know who I am. And I go, no, you, you know, no, man. You know. And he goes, uh, I mean, you know. And then he says, you know, who he is, you know. And it's like, and inside me, I'm like, holy shit, man. I just saw that guy's book. He's like a freak, you know. Like I didn't really see him as a carny at that point. I saw him as like the writer of the Satanic Bible. So uh, it was, I was kind of bummed out. But on the other hand, he was going where I was going. So. But these guys were important, you know, all those beats, you know, they were like your big brothers or something, teachers, you know, like, or, you know, they were almost like father figures, I suppose, but like, they weren't like anybody's fathers, so they were kind of like old big brothers, you know. And, weird uh, uncles. Yeah, weird uncles. And, and uh, uh, City Lights was so important, man, because it had all the all sorts of great literature, and it was so friendly, and it was such a great place. It really didn't seem like it was just there for money. It was there to, uh, you know, it was like a, it was a cultural center, man. And then you could sit at tables downstairs and read books, and they let me go in there, and I'd even grab a book and go up and, you know, uh, go into that room up there, man. It used to be open right above the cash register, and I'd go in up there and uh, read for a while, and I'd even nod out and go to sleep sometimes. And uh, it was very nice for me, because then I could wake up and go across the street and play, you know. And so it was a really important place to me, and it still is, really. I, uh, uh, if anything ever happened to it, I would really... Uh be appalled, you know, but it's hanging in there. It seems like it's doing good. But it's a great bookstore. It's one of the world's great bookstores. We don't want to see this one go out, but this is a great place. It's like, and they have readings in there, you know. I saw Richard Hell in there and uh, different people. So, it's, you know, uh, I've seen Ferlinghetti read in there and uh, I met Ferlinghetti in there. So, yeah. pretty, that's the doorway over there where Bob Dylan and Ginsburg and those guys all had, uh, Robbie Robertson had their famous, real famous picture taken, you know, back in the, the day. Let's go stand. Yeah, let's do it.